Welcome back to Astrobot. Uh, well, Astro's Playroom, sorry. Astrobot's the name of the new game, and I'm really excited for that. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm still calling it Astro Boy, so at least you're accurate. Yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> Which is funny because now we're getting a new Astro Boy, what is it, animated movie? <laughs> yeah, they're doing another reboot. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. This is. I the... mean, we also have Pluto if you count that. No. It's got Astro Boy in it. I don't care. <laughs> it's not called Astro Boy. Oh, and neither is this. We're playing Astro's Playroom. <laughs> But, um, yeah, you know, you were talking in previous parts about how this particular game doesn't necessarily look worth playing if you don't really get the the references or don't care much about the references. And I can understand that, but what do you think, uh, do you think that holds true for the new game coming up? Or do you still, or are you just like, uh, no, that's more of its own thing. Oh, we'll just have to see how it is. I'd have to relook at the trailer because, like, everything I'm seeing of this one specifically just looks very, like, I don't want to fully say stock as clear as a lot of effort into this, but it doesn't look like something I'd ever want to play for more than an hour at a time. Mm -hmm. And I think the references well, help extend that playtime. At least in enjoyment. So if I don't get the references, then I'm really just not just gonna sit here thinking like, oh, I could be playing something else that feels more to my sensibilities, I guess. Yeah, um, I, I get what you mean. Yeah, the um, I, I mean it's kind of like in the same realm as like, uh, Lucky Super Lucky's Tale, which looks like a, a platformer I'd probably really enjoy. But every time I look at it and think about buying it, it's just like, eh. I just don't feel like playing it. Yeah, I, I, I can um, maybe understand I, Maybe I just that, don't like the yeah. vibe. Maybe I'm just not feeling the vibe with it, you know? Well, that game in particular, like, I can see kind of what you're talking about about with this game feeling very stock. Um, that game and all of its games really feel like the most, th the most standard 3D platformer or 3D platformers you could possibly imagine, you know? And this, this definitely fits that bill, too. I don't want to say... Uh, it, it's like this masterpiece or anything. Um, I don't know. I just feel like this has a lot more. Oh, um, this is like in the same realm it. as like Gravity Circuit, where it's absolutely perfect for what it wants to be, and it does literally everything correctly. But if you don't like the initial idea of it, you're probably not going to jive with it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and and that's fair. I think the the new game. Just from what we've seen of it, the the singular trailer, I think uh, definitely looks like it's going to have a lot more to it. But it still has that uh, just standard 3D platformer vibe. Which, you know what, I'm fine with if they do it well, you know? Yeah. Um, also, high Death Stranding. <laughs> <laughs> All I just realized was that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Another one that left PlayStation. Yep. Well, I mean, a lot of the ones in this game uh, were already off PlayStation by the time this game even released, so... Well, yeah, because a lot of Sony's uh, exclusive titles are from third-party studios. Yeah. So outside of ones like Naughty Dog or uh, Insomniac, where they just bought out the studios... It's not necessarily the most loyalty outside of, like, Square Enix, where I think Sony has, like, almost half the stock in that company. Mm-hmm. So, that one... Kind of... You yeah. kind of get why Final Fantasy's only ever on PlayStation, and it hurts. Yeah, well, it's also, like... I don't know, I kind of feel bad for Final Fantasy these days. It doesn't seem like it's selling as well as you would think. Um... Especially Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, like that apparently uh, was like a high eco, but apparently that was like a uh, like like kind of a financial failure in a lot of ways. <laughs> That's so yeah. cute. I like that. It's um, great. It's so good. Uh, I think they kind of also overestimated Final Fantasy VII in a regard, because like yeah. sure it is a legendary game. 
but it's also heavily derided by a lot of modern players for its very dated look. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know the remake was definitely enough to draw in a crowd. It definitely did well. But yeah. once people realize that it's a full 40-hour RPG on its own, and only a third of Final Fantasy VII, I, I, I don't think I, I think Sony I don't think Square Enix was estimating how much people still want to really yeah. get into RPGs these days. You know that's yeah. something why Persona is kicking off so much because those are like let's face it, much cheaper, much more cheaply made RPGs in comparison to Final Fantasy and anything from Square Enix. Yeah. So those games are a lot more sustainable with their smaller fan bases. And you, and because they also have their... Who are also, you know, diehard fans get to go for their high price points. Because Persona 3 Reload is a $70 game. It's, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, it, it, they, they get more advantage out of it because I feel like they're better budgeted for an RPG market. Where an RPG market today... Not necessarily smaller than what it used to be, but a lot more dedicated to hardcore fans. And a lot of hardcore fans have also been pissed off at like the idea of a Final Fantasy VII remake and how Square Enix is doing it. Yeah. There's a lot of factors to it, and I am rambling a lot. <laughs> no, I get you. I feel like for Final Fantasy VII, and especially like the earlier Final Fantasy games before that, I feel like what they're doing with uh, the Dragon Quest HD 2D uh, remake that they're doing, I feel like something like that would have done significantly better for them. You know, it's a it's a lower budget thing, yeah. but it's still a really high quality remake. And I think something like that could have been really good. Well, I think at the end of the day, what people, <laughs> what they really should have just gone for was just remake all the assets, you know, in Final Fantasy VII. Doom 3D, but still keep the original art style. It's yeah. like, you can have the original dumb-looking characters who are out of proportion, but I think it still works, especially as an art style. But I think they felt a lot of pressure from players to make it look really, really nice. Especially because a lot of the people working on 7 Remake did the uh, were on the team for 13. And I think 7's running into a lot of flaws that 13 ran into. And that yeah. kind of hurt it with modern audiences. Because, yeah, again, I, I just think at the big end of the day, Square Enix is kind of underestimating how sellable RPGs are to a casual audience. Yeah. Because we're at a point where parents buying games for their kids is, uh, I think, a significantly smaller... Oh, my goodness. Is, I think, <laughs> <laughs> a significantly smaller part of the... <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> what fuck that anyways <laughs> i think parents buying games for their kids is a significantly smaller part of uh the gaming market now and i think that's one of the things that helped off final fantasy a lot back in the day yeah uh i'm rambling a lot though <laughs> this is not final fantasy this is fucking astro's playroom it's not that serious <laughs> yeah, we're here for Astro Boy and Astro Boy only. What? No, we're not here for Astro Boy. <laughs> it's Astro Bot. <laughs> uh, anyways, this is probably my least favorite. Well, actually, I don't know if this is my least favorite. We got we got a ball, and we control it with the trackpad. Ah. It's Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> uh, I just got PTSD. <laughs> yeah, this is much easier to control than that game, though. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Just a little awkward, but you can get used to it. And, uh, yeah, you, you get used to it pretty quick. Um, At least this looks it, much better than what Mario Galaxy tried. It's about the same for me. <laughs> it's like the same gimmick, but this is just, you know. Yeah, but this looks trackpad. a little more easily controllable. Yeah, well, I've also played this like 
three times at this point. Oh yeah, earlier <laughs> I wanted to say when you were like, this looks like something I'd only want to play for an hour, and I I, I was thinking to myself, well, you know, the game's only like two hours <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> if you go fair. for everything, so. Well, I was saying that in regards to a full-fledged game. Yeah. Because well, I think this is a perfect uh, length for that, especially as a pack-in game. Yeah. Uh, I I think the new game looks like it's, you know, packing a lot more stage-specific gimmicks to kind of spice yeah. things up I and, just like, actual yeah. power-ups. I just hope it has enough of its own identity instead of just PlayStation. Yeah. And it, it looks like... Oh, you hey, know, I actually it, have one of those. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, something I can recognize. Yeah, I played these stages way out of order, uh, by the way, because, you know, in each stage at the end of them, you get the PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and 4, and there's four levels, but I ended up doing the PlayStation 3 level first, and uh, the PlayStation 2 level, and this is now the PlayStation 1 level. <laughs> uh, but, this doesn't look like the level I'd want to start with. No, well, I mean, you get it out of the way quickest. I think this is probably, yeah, the worst gimmick also, I wish there was an Astrobot PS1 game. That'd be fun. <laughs> Make it. Look, they're listening to the PS1 CD player. I know what that is, because I actually had a PS1 as a kid, and that's what we did with it. <laughs> I used it once to listen to The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask on CD. Hmm. You you actually okay? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, all I had also in the room was the Switch, and I looked at the PS One. I'm like, you know, this is, this can play CDs, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh... So yep. you know, I sinned a little with it. <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Hey, man. I, I just really want the, the full game of the <laughs> this. It's it's like really that's like the whole reason I recorded this for the channel. I don't know if it was necessarily a great idea, but I did it anyways. Um, but the hey, new if game. Anything, it's short. Yeah, the new game just looks to me like what I was hoping for after I had played this game. Um. When, for the first time, I was like, man, this was really good. But Jesus Christ, it was so short. <laughs> it, uh, at least you didn't make the mistake of recording near for the channel. Hey, I, I, I'm I, not even faulting near. I'm just faulting uh, Drakengard, Drakengard, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> at least that was only two parts. It wasn't originally planned to be. I, I, well, that much. I broke a lot of things. I was worried. You know, one day I'll finish that game. You don't need to. <laughs> you really don't. You really don't need to. I own a Japanese copy. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I do not care. <laughs> <laughs> there is no universe where I play Guard. I still think it should be the 100,000 subscriber goal. Uh, sure, 100,000. Sure, whatever. <laughs> if if that's Get what you want to do, because it's unattainable, then we never have to play it. Let's go. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe if we really want to make it unattainable, let's say a million. <laughs> no. Nah. At a million, I'll do Halo Two Legendary. Oh wow. no, I'd rather play Halo Two Legendary than Crap Dragon Guard. Uh, At a million, I will live stream my entire playthrough of Dragon Guard. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I'm sticking true to that. I will actually do it, even though I really don't want to. <laughs> I wish you luck on that one. Hey, you'll be there with me. Yeah, remembering the so how much I suffered in my playthrough. <laughs> it's gonna be great, and I'm gonna know not nothing. So it's gonna Tell be even better. I like 500k subscribers i'll finally play mario odyssey oh, ah! i'm so no, do not make mario odyssey a 500k <laughs> sub goal are you kidding me that game is so good <laughs> that would be a disservice to yourself more than anything 
Uh, that means I gotta, you know, work hard. To, to, uh, I feel like that's a reference to something. Uh, the everywhere, everywhere that there's like a little astro with a camera pointing at something is a reference. So, yeah. Fair enough. That's like uh, fucking infamous or something. I don't know. Oh, I've never played that. Ah! Really? <laughs> okay, you sat man. there. You were waiting for the timing, and then you decided to say fuck it. I didn't know how long it was gonna be, so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it and hope. Dude, they they wait a while on that last one to get you in case you jump straight from the one to the other. <laughs> mm, dicks. Fucking assholes. I would really like an Astrobot game that is just yeah, insanely real fucking hard. Lucky there. <laughs> yeah. I would love an Astrobot game that is just insanely hard. Because this game's super easy. It's the game developed by the Celeste developers. Yes. <laughs> but, um, nah, because apparently uh, the, the, the new game, Astrobot, they are actually going to try and make it really challenging. And I'm super excited about that. Because I think that with how precise and tight the controls are in this game, uh, really taking advantage of that with some tight ass platforming challenges would be really good. Mm -hmm. But this is fun. We got freaking uh, evil CRT televisions that tried to crush us. Did Sony ever make a uh, CRT? I'm assuming they did. Yeah, Sony has CRTs, but these are Asobi branded, which is the team who made the game. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Cool. Yeah. There's a lot of Asobi, like, branded stuff around. Like, in the background earlier, you could see some, like, computer chips floating off in the background that had, like, the Asobi logo on it and stuff. Um, I like the little, little details like that. I like evil CRTs that want to kill me. Because, <laughs> like... Kids these Lord days the aren't gonna get that. Iron Giant, where did you come from? Yeah, it's it's the it's the Astro Giant. Also earlier, I kind of missed it, but there was a uh, Shadow of the Colossus and Last Guardian reference as well. <laughs> God damn it! Well, actually, the last the Shadow of the Colossus one might not have happened yet. I'm not actually sure. Mm. That might have been in, that might be in the next level. But okay. Uh, there was a Last Guardian one. Wow, this already looks so much better than Sonic Heroes. Uh, oh yeah, this this is infinitely more controllable than that game. But if you hit one of these bumpers, say goodbye to your control for a bit. It's really hard to regain control. <laughs> Just like Sonic uh, Heroes. Uh, stop, please. <laughs> oh my oh, goodness. Man. I just want to get in the little hole. Wait a minute. Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're the one editing this, man. I know. That's the joke! Anyways. Uh, yeah, no, I don't so like this about a fucking hole? ball. Nothing. Nothing about a little hole. Anyways. Uh, this... Th th yeah, I don't like this this gimmick in this level. This is like the one part of the game where I'm just like, eh. Why do developers keep thinking they can do this? <laughs> like, does it just sound that appealing in your head? I never got in that. Why they just love doing these kinds of gimmicks? I think they did it for this game because this game is clearly Mario okay, Galaxy. Well, Mario Light. Galaxy. <laughs> well, no, that's what. Yeah, I don't know why they did it. No, well, they... I guess they they had the idea because we remote. That's why. Uh, but th this game is just doing it because hey, you know, this game is basically Mario Galaxy, but without the gravity stuff. So how long it take you to get there? <laughs> Uh, it only took. This is like my second try, but I just decided to cut it because, um, or no, this is my third try. But this is what commentary post commentary is for. We it's very fucking slippery. <laughs> I want whatever this is. Ah, the Dual Shock. Let's go. Those apes can't escape now. Okay. I cannot believe PlayStation created the DualShock and then never changed their controller again until the PlayStation 5. <laughs> <laughs> what are they you talking added... about? The DualShock 4 had that one thing. That matters. Oh yeah, I meant I meant the the PS4, my bad. Okay, but the PS3, the P PS1 DualShock up to the PS3 was the exact same fucking controller. They just added the 6 axis 
to the PS3 controller. Well, the triggers that's also feel it. a little better on later ones. Uh it's not that different. It's not that different. They the the it's... trigger shape is not ergonomic. I I hate that. I really don't like the Dual Shock one through three. I don't think they feel good in the hands. No, the 360 controller was better. For sure. And the original... Well, not the, like, Duke controller, but the yeah, original Xbox controllers. Xbox controllers, man. I don't know if you've had the, held those recently. They're still not that great. They're definitely better I think better they're better... The Duke, but still. I think they're better than the DualShock, DualShock 2, and DualShock 3. Mm. I don't know about that one. PlayStation Ambience. <laughs> Uh, the 360 controller, though, like, I never thought you could top it, and then the Xbox One controller came out, and it's like, oh, oh. I, I'm give and take with the new controller. <laughs> I, I can't believe I did that, but <laughs> I'm give and take with the, the Xbox One controller versus the 360. I think the analog sticks feel better on the 360. No, uh, they feel too they're short. Tighter. See, it's not I the, don't, see, they, they feel, feel too short. tight, you know? See, I, I don't mind that. I don't know what this is fucking referencing. But we got the fucking cat girl Astro. Why is there a V in the V and U? <laughs> I'm guessing it's a reference to something. Oh, yeah, the Dreamcast. Why is that here? No, it, the PlayStation had their own fucking VMU probably before nope, it's only Dreamcast. <laughs> Even though the Dreamcast one's clearly better. Dude, the Dreamcast fucking VMUs, like, mesmerized me as a kid. I was like, holy crap, there's, like, a little Game Boy in your controller. That's fucking awesome. And but then of you course realize it's... it doesn't do anything. Yeah, and then I realized it's shit. <laughs> it's just a, a glorified memory card. Yeah. But you know uh, what? I'm so fine cool. with memory cards. I like memory cards. I think they'd be really useful on modern systems. Uh, just to streamline the whole fucking... Uh, install SSDs process, which you know what the series Xbox Series systems actually do. They have proprietary SSDs that you can buy that are basically just memory cards that you plug in. So that's kind of cool. Oh, that's nice. But um, I'm surprised yeah. games have never done that, like what the Switch did with cards, but you know, in an actually bigger format. To get yeah, the times. literally, like we're getting to a point now where game consoles they, they may as well just package these games as their own SSD and treat it like a cartridge. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Cause well, like the fucking is, the is new the Call of Duty up. Well yeah, of course. But the new Call of Duty is fucking three hundred gigabytes. Yep. What, what the hell? You basically do need a whole damn SSD for that thing at that point. Like you need two Xbox three sixties to fit that <laughs> back in the day if a game that big released so, <laughs> like, that's just ridiculous. Is, 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 is nobody ever try to optimize assets anymore? Like, I don't... No, they don't. Unless you're Nintendo. Nintendo still does. Because they have uh, to. Like, that's the one advantage I get with Nintendo Switch is, like, if the developer actually cares about their Switch port, it will actually be optimized. Because you have yeah. to. But, like, anything on... I swear, anything on, like, Xbox One that releases nowadays... It runs like shit. No one ever cares about it. Like, this thing is still powerful. I feel like it can run more than what they try to make for it. And then even things on Series X and PlayStation 5, I swear, still look like shit if they weren't developed straight for it and they're PC ports of games. Like, my yeah. brother was showing me off a game that was ported to Series X. He's like, oh, man, look how good it looks. I'm like, yeah, but this is still running at 30 FPS. And this it, it kind of just looks like an Xbox One game. Like, I don't... I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't see any upgrade here. I see an upgrade with like first party developed games and specific games, like. But I don't. <laughs> I don't really get. Yeah, the whole. Oh, our systems can do 4K, but every game that you play in 4K is going to be at 30 frames a second. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> just, just, consoles kind of suck. <laughs> yeah, the the current gen, like I I think there's a lot of value in the Xbox Series X just for its backwards compatibility and whatnot. But, man, this current gen, just for, like, games releasing on it, has just not been great. 
I mean, great games have come out, but it's just like, yeah, wh- all of this could have been on a PlayStation Four or an Xbox One if they really wanted it to be. You, you know, know, Final Fantasy VII Remake was on PS4 and it ran beautifully, mm-hmm. but not pl- not uh, Rebirth. It's only on PS5, probably also hurting the sales. <laughs> Definitely hurting the sales <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, but we can talk about that some other point. 